Welcome to the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast, brought to you by GuitarZoom.com. If you want to improve your guitar playing, keep listening. If you want to improve even faster, go to GuitarZoom.com, where you'll find all of Steve's premium courses, masterclasses, and memberships that'll help you quickly and easily improve your playing. Now, here's your host, Steve Stein. new strings on a bunch of my guitars this weekend so nice yes you still do that stuff yourself <laughs> yeah yep yeah it usually takes about a half an afternoon to uh you know i change them usually like four or five at a time four or five guitars that way it only takes an hour or two you know right very cool yeah hey guys thanks for joining us on this uh warm day here in california how warm is it in north dakota steve uh, i think we're sitting right around 25 hey we're above zero there you go man <laughs> yes hey guys thanks for being here really appreciate it truth guitar method troy mike birdie bear birdie bear pat don richard james tom robbins Sean Evans, Alfonso Murr. Guys, thank you for showing up. Anthony Whitaker. Zvetislav. Richie Siv We have folks from all over the place. Hey, guys, uh, wherever you're from, tell us. We love to read all this cool thing. Belgium, awesome. We love Massachusetts, to. Minnesota, cold here in Minnesota, yeah. Oklahoma yep. City, New Jersey. Hunter from the East Side. That sounds like a movie. I don't know where the East Side is. East Side of what? <laughs> east Side of... <laughs> is that New York? Uh, the Last Jedi. Columbus, Ohio. Wow. A lot of folks here. Fort Myers. The Big Island of Hawaii. Bob Dugan. No, Dungan. Wow. I would love to go to the Big Island of Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, Vienna, Austria, Dundee, Scotland, Reno, Southern Oregon, Norway, Indiana, Scotland. Uh, wow. Virginia, Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. Georgia, the country. No, Georgia, the state. Uh, Germany, Andreas from Pittsburgh, Andreas, Germany. Cali, Kevin. Scotland. Hofrichter. Awesome. Hello, Super everybody. cool, man. Serbia. Maine. We're in Spain. I've been to Spain before. I'm curious. Uh, Maine, Los Angeles. Guys, this is so cool. I'm, I can just sit and read these all day. Israel. Makes the world uh, much smaller. It does. Iceland. Iceland. That's so cool. I think that may be the first time I've ever seen anybody on one of these calls from Iceland. That's cool. Yeah, Madrid. Oh, that's a great city. One of the great cities of the world. So Scotland in there. Alabama, North Carolina. Where are you from, Fanny Jones in North Carolina? I love North Carolina. Hunter Smith, Vermont, Latvia. Latvia. Crazy that's Rotterdam cool City. Canada. Dude, this is freaking amazing. This is why we, we should do these. Uh, I think we're on to something doing these in the morning. Uh, here. Yeah, what I said is it's great because then, you know, whether or not there are more viewers. There's just people can, can join worldwide, which is so cool. Yeah. Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> Portugal. Ooh, I've heard that's a beautiful place. Belize, Utah. Crazy. This is freaking me out, man. Okay. So I have to be, I have to calm down. Erie, Pennsylvania. Dubai. Dubai. Bombay. Wales. Richardson, Texas. I was just talking wow. about Steve Grimmett from Grim Reaper. Whitakers. From the UK. Oh, that's right. Cool. Yeah. We've got another collaboration thing coming soon, so I had to talk to him this morning. <laughs> Somebody said, technically, I'm in a call right now teaching third graders. <laughs> that's that's awesome 
<laughs> we should hook them up to this. Let them learn guitar. Yeah, right. That's uh, awesome. Philippines. Wow, what time is it in the Philippines? Milan, Italy. Tony Escobar from Milan, Italy. Awesome. Guys, thanks for coming. Really appreciate you guys. We're about, I don't know, four or five minutes in here while everybody's still connecting. Stockton, UK. Catalina, Long Island. <laughs> Catalina. Just kidding. Oh, that's funny. Kenya. Wow. Describe that packy chip. It was hot, but I've, I grew up eating incredibly hot stuff. Um, so it was hot, but for about two minutes, and then, then it was then it was okay. So wow. I think I disappointed people because I didn't get all crazy with it, but it really, it was hot, but it only lasts for a couple of minutes. Mm. Western New York. Pete Eason from Western New York. We're, we're Western New York. I used to live in Rochester for a while. I went to school up there. Uh, Spokane. Verona, Italy. That's a gorgeous place. I've actually been there. Massimiliano Gallo. No, Gallo. No, do you pronounce the L's in Italian? Man, I'm really off track here. <laughs> Riverside. I'm right down, you're right down the street from me. Cool. All right, guys. Hey. Thanks again for being here. Uh, let's get started. We want to give you as much value from joining us today as we possibly can. Today we're doing a uh, essential techniques workshop for you. Today is on picking and rhythm control. Picking and rhythm control. So anything that you have questions about, especially regarding picking and rhythm control, or any type of techniques whether it's soloing techniques like bends and slides and hammer-ons and pull-offs or for some kind of rhythm challenge you may be happen, uh, having, let us know if there's a particular issue you're having with picking. We're trying to answer all those for you. We're going to have a uh, we're going to have a question and answer session here. About halfway through, we're going to do a rapid-fire question and answer session where we're going to try to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Um, I'll be fielding those for you and handing them, hand them over to you, Steve. And we're also going to, uh, show you guys how to kind of like how Steve's brain works. I'm going to share with you a behind the scenes look about, uh, how Steve creates courses for you. And this is a mind map that he creates before he ever records the first minute of video. He sits down and creates these, uh, start to finish mind maps of how he wants to lay out a course. And I'm going to show you the, the way that works a little later. I'll show you the, the mind of Steve Stein, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, people really enjoy that. We're going to do that. Also, guys, if you want to learn this stuff, uh, keep watching. Keep tuned in. Turn off your phone, maybe. Turn off your notifications. Like, Just stay focused, and uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this that will be super valuable for you. You can take away, and it'll be an aha moment for you. If you want to learn that, keep watching. Stay tuned. If you want to learn it even faster, go to guitarzoom.com and check out Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. It's a big six and a half hour step by step course just on technique. And uh, I think you'll like it. A whole lot of people have already signed up for it. And in fact, so many have, we decided to extend the introductory uh, price. I don't know if I told you this, Steve. I've actually decided to extend the the sale through for for a few more days. I can't remember how long, but it was going to end today. But um, we've been doing these workshops, and we kind of out of the hat decided to do a couple more of these. So a whole lot of people uh, were very interested in continuing to come to these and wanted to get more information about your new course. So we decided to extend it a few more days, guys. So if you're interested, it's available right now at the introductory price, uh, Essential Techniques by Steve Stein. Available at guitarzoom.com. Welcome, Steve. Hello, Dan. <laughs> By the way, if you guys don't know who the heck I am, I'm the founder of Guitar Zoom. It's my good friend, Steve Stein. We've been working together for many years now. Always a pleasure to be here with you, man. Um, oh, one thing I did want to mention before we get kicked off, while everybody's still kind of piling in. If you guys are comfortable in sharing this, we did this the last few sessions. And it was really cool. It's, it's really a fun thing for Steve and I to, to watch. You guys told us where you're from. Please tell us what, what challenge you're currently having. We'll try to answer that. But also, we'd like to know this. 
why do you play guitar? Why do you play? And what has guitar done in your life? What is playing guitar? How has it changed your life? So why do you play and how has guitar changed your life? That's a really fascinating question that Steve and I love to, to uh, read your answers to. One guy the last time said that basically it's the reason he's married because he met his wife. She came up to him. He was playing some place and, you know, that whole rock star guy on the stage thing. One person had a terrible car accident and basically through a uh, guitar was able to do some rehab and get back on his feet. One guy we met in person in Nashville actually had a, a drinking problem. Got interested and in, started watching Steve's videos on YouTube. Ended up becoming a Guitar Zoom member. member. Uh, got his life turned around. So it's just fascinating to us and keeps the old fires burning. When we get to know kind of what you, what your story is. That's what we want to know. Helps keep me off booze. Laugh out loud, says Pat Perry. Roger that, sir. <laughs> a good hobby is is better than too much booze. All right, guys. I'm going to turn it over to Steve. Let him take it from here. Today we're doing picking and rhythm control. So hope you're ready for this. Take it away, my friend. Okay. Um, the big thing I'm going to focus on, uh, rhythm control, I'm not exactly sure what we mean by rhythm control, but picking is what we're going to focus on for the most part. And then if we have any questions about different rhythm things, we can go through that a little bit. Um, but basically, you know, if you think about it, when you play guitar, when you're, when you're playing single note ideas, you're either picking them or you're slurring them or you're... Uh, you're sweeping or, or arpeggiating them. Those are really the three different kinds of things that you can do. So when you're picking, either you're down picking something or you're alternate picking something or we might be adding some element of legato in. Where we're adding in hammer-ons and pull-offs and that sort of thing. Um, and then the other thing is, is that we can certainly rake through or sweep through things as well when we're playing. If I play something, I might push through some things. So I thought what we would do is we would talk about some of those techniques and understand that in the, in the and I hate to say real world because it sounds silly, but on, on the other side of practice, most guitar players use all of these things. So everything isn't picked and everything isn't legato, and everything isn't sweep picking. It's just kind of a combination of those things that makes it feel most comfortable. But then there's the, the, the rhythm control aspect that I was thinking about with this was, when you do those things though, understand that sometimes the, the element of being able to feel that rhythm changes if you're picking it versus maybe doing legato or something like that. So what I'd like to do before we even start off here is just talk about control of the notes themselves. And I talked about this in one of the other sessions, but I'd like to just go back and revisit that just for a moment. So let's say you're playing an open chord or a power chord or something like that, or even a bar chord where you don't want all the strings, right? So let's say it's something like I'm playing a G chord. I'm playing the Angus Young G chord. So in playing that, what I'm doing is on the fifth string, what Angus has a tendency to do, and this is why I do this so much, is I, I deaden out the fifth string. So instead of making a full four finger G, what Angus does a lot is he'll take his middle finger and he'll deaden out the fifth string underneath there so it doesn't ring out. And I remember the first time seeing that written down where it had an X on there and I was like, well, how do you strum the sixth string and then strum the other ones mm -hmm. and not hit that string? Like that would be really, really tough to do. And it's not, you strum it, you control the strings when you play. So you see right there, what I'm doing is I'm killing that fifth string, but the rest of them can vibrate. Let me show you an example of a power chord. If I played a power chord on the sixth string, I'm gonna be playing three fingers. You know, sometimes you only play two fingers, whatever works for you but i'm going to play three strings so the question is what about the other three strings well instead of leaving them open and exposed like that to be able to vibrate i purposely again touch them with my first finger to deaden out all of those strings and there's two things that happens with that number one those strings are now gone so you can't hear them and number two, that way when I strum, I don't have to deviate my strumming at all. And we talked about rhythm, I think in the first group, first live session or whatever it was. But when I strum, 
I don't have to worry about like just going like up here or something like that so I don't hit the wrong strings. They're all gone, so I don't have any problems with that. So whenever I play, that's exactly what I do. Now, if you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, go to guitarzoom.com and consider becoming a premium member. There are three memberships to choose from. VIP, which gives you instant access to a library of short but powerful courses as well as new bite-sized lessons each month. There's also Play Songs that gives you step-by-step -step lessons so you can learn to play your favorite songs fast. And finally, there's Masterclass, university-level training on everything from soloing to music theory, from blues to home recording. For more info about these memberships and all the premium courses available to you, go to guitarzoom.com. Now back to the podcast. Let's say I took that fifth string or that sixth string power chord there, and let's say I moved it down one string. So when I move it down, now I'm no longer on the sixth string. So that sixth string can ring out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first finger and I'm going to press on the fifth string like I want to but I'm gonna use the tip of my index finger to lightly touch the sixth string so it dies. So when I strum, again, you don't hear it. Now, does that mean that I should always strum it all the time? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I just wanna... Right, that sort of thing, then I wouldn't be hitting that. But if I was doing... kind of strum, then I would most certainly be hitting that string. So learning how to control those strings are really important to developing the proper sound of whatever it, whatever it is that you're trying to create like that. Now the same idea keeps going when it comes to single notes. So let's say I wanted to go to the fourth string and I wanted to pluck the fourth string. Well now the fourth string I'm pressing on, but the fifth and sixth st strings are now exposed, right? Well, I know I can touch the fifth string with the tip of my index finger, so that's going to deaden that. And I know I can touch the bottom strings with the rest of my first finger, so that's going to kill those. But what I'm not touching is the sixth string. So what happens there is I'm going to take this hand and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start touching the sixth string up here. Usually with this part of my hand is what I use, but everybody's different. And now all you're going to hear is that string. Everything else is deadened out. And then the last thing that you'll notice, which has nothing to do with any of that, is I roll my volume off. Whenever I'm not playing, my volume is off. Okay? This is a cruel rule that I learned in college when I got chewed out by my college professor for being on stage. We used to have these guitar recitals back at Moorhead State University where all the other bands would come to watch the new recruits, the new players, because there were so many great guitar players at Moorhead State at that time. So we would do these, these um, what are they called again, Dan? Uh, uh, recitals. Recitals, yeah. Yeah, so we would do these recitals and the, the place would be packed. And I had very little experience with playing on stage because I was 17 when I went to college. And, um, and I remember playing a riff and I didn't shut off my volume and he absolutely chewed me out. So from that point forward, I learned that whenever I'm playing, my volume goes off. So my volume is always off if I'm not playing. And when I want to play, and then it's off again. So those are ways that I control things when I play. So it always sounds, I'm not getting unwanted sounds from other places. So that's something to start with before we get into these other things. Super cool. So you're always rolling that volume knob on and off. I, I, I replace my volume knobs about three times a year because I'm always rolling them on and off always. And, and the thing for me is, is that they have to be loose. Like, you know, when you buy, sometimes you buy a guitar and you turn it and it's really tight. Mm -hmm. I have the, the, um, the tone pot and the volume pot replaced. So they're very loose. So I literally, if you can hear that, they literally yeah. roll on their own. So I can control it. You know, I can turn it up and down very easily. Get the 
song I want. And when I'm done, it's off. That's so cool. Yeah. So it's those are things that people don't think about all the time. But that's that's the trick because when you start learning to play, for instance, loud, if you buy an amp and you know maybe you're jamming with a band or something like that. <laughs> You have to control all of this so you, so people don't hear all those other strings, right? And uh, the noise that they can cause and all those sorts of things. And that way, if I touch all those strings as well, and I'm I'm playing very loud, and I get a feedback, let's say I want a, a I want a feedback, which oftentimes you do, I can control that feedback. No, I'm not going to get it now because I'm not very loud. Right? And sometimes you can even use palm muting to control that too. But you'll always notice when I'm playing, unless, unless it's something where I really want more than one note ringing out, everything, everything connects to each other, but they don't overlap, right? And that's what you're looking for when you play is trying to keep them all very clear and clean. As you play. <laughs> so good. So good. Guys, um, if you're just now joining us, we're about 20 minutes into this Essential Techniques workshop today. We're talking about picking and rhythm control. Everything we were talking about today is related to Steve's new course. It's called Essential Techniques, and it's available right now at the introductory price at guitarzoom.com. It's about a six and a half hour course. It's all in technique. So we're just going to scratch the surface of just one very small aspect of technique today. But this course Steve uh, created for you is about six hours long and a whole lot of people have already signed up for it. In fact, if you're on this call and you have already signed up for the Essential Techniques course, come back and post wherever you are uh, what you're currently working on in that course because it has lots of different sections. And you don't have to go through the entire thing from start to finish. You can bounce around. So I'm curious, people that have already signed up what are you working on and what do you think about it so far? That'd be uh, super cool. Also, guys, we're streaming this thing live to three different YouTube channels and uh, I think like three or four different Facebook groups and pages and things. And so where you currently are, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or some other place, you might be watching this. Um, what you're seeing, the, the comments that you might be seeing or whatever that people are making, Steve and I are actually seeing that times probably about 10 because they're all being fed into this one thing that Steve and I can see from all these different places. So if, if you're like, wait, they're not answering my questions because we're, there's a whole lot of other questions coming in at the same time. So what we're trying to do is we actually have somebody, Mike, who's helping me right now. And um, he's putting together all the questions. So if you have any questions regarding technique, picking and rhythm uh, or anything else regarding technique, go ahead and post them wherever you are. Mike will grab that and then put them into this thing that we have here. And we're going to do a question and answer session for you a little bit later. So keep that in mind. And if you're joining us later, if you missed any of the previous sessions, you'll hear Steve say stuff like, we did this in a previous workshop. And you might be like, wait a minute, I thought this was the first one. Don't worry. We take we took all the workshops and put them on the Guitar Zoom YouTube channel for you. You can go there and watch all of them. There's actually about five or six hours worth of workshops there already. And then this one, when it's uh, after we're done with this live broadcast, will be put there as well. So you can always go back and watch those. And of course, if you want to get the course, everything we're talking about that is is in the course. Central techniques available at guitarzoom.com. All right, Steve, where do we go from here, my friend? Okay, well, we've already talked a lot about, and and of course, the the course goes in way more detail. But we've talked a lot about down picking and alternate picking. And a lot of your questions are either a answered in some of the live sessions that we've already done. Or you just have to understand that these things, they take time, right? That's the whole thing with, with practice is that you've got to do it over and over and over to develop strength and stamina and speed, right? You just have to do these things. So if we take, for instance, an alternate picking idea, here's something to think about a little bit. If you're trying to work on your alternate picking, oftentimes with alternate picking, we build what we call three note per string patterns where we're playing three notes on each string. So let's just say we took one little piece of a three note per string pattern. So I'm going to go to the seventh fret here. I'm going to play seven, eight, ten. 
So I'm playing down, up, down. Now, before I ever worry about speed picking or alternate picking or all these other things, I have to make sure that those notes are separated like I just talked about in the beginning of this live session. I've got to control these notes. I got to make sure everything else is deadened, right? So I want to make sure that that's set up first. Okay, now, as we've talked about before, and again, we talk about it in the course, whenever I'm picking things and my hands have to synchronize, I have to understand that before I worry about synchronization of my hands, I have to make sure that this hand, which is my fretting hand, is strong enough to execute the things that I want to do. Because no matter what it is that I'm doing, they're combinations of fingers, right? One and two, or one and three, or three and four, or whatever it might be. I have to be aware of that when I start trying to put these together. And that's why for me, I always recommend for people, practice a lot of legato exercises. Practice a lot of picking exercises, and they're all in the course, but you know, practice, for instance, the three minute down picking exercise, different kinds of things like that. Practice the various legato exercises that are in there to develop those. Then you move on to what I call synchronicity, right? You're gonna synchronize these two hands together by practicing whatever it is, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. So as I play this seven, eight, 10, I'm playing down, up, down. Well, I'm gonna go to the seventh fret of the first string, and I'm gonna do that with an up strum, because if you think about it, when I'm playing, I'm just simply going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, I'm doing alternate picking. So what I wanna train my pick to be able to do is to move to a new string with an upstroke without it feeling awkward. Because when we first start playing oftentimes, we always think that we need to start with a down pick, and that's not always the case. Now, this isn't religion. We're gonna talk about some other things too that you can do, but in this particular case, there is nothing else I, I can do that would be more efficient. So I'm gonna go down, up, down, up. And what I start doing in my head as I play this is I start focusing on the feel of that up. That always reminds me of da 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 right? But that's yeah. what it is, you're hearing that triplet and you're going to that note. So you're trying to get them all to be even. You're trying to make sure that the pinky is heard, right? Sometimes the pinky doesn't get uh, enough attack because maybe your pinky isn't strong enough. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back down. So I'm gonna go. And notice how I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, right? and then ending on that down. So that's a great little technique to start learning to develop strength, speed, stamina, and certainly synchronicity, right? It all comes from doing that over and over and over and being aware of all the components of it. Because like we talked about, again, I think it was in the first session, is about um, being honest with yourself when you practice. If it's not working or something's off, don't just try and pretend like it doesn't exist. Figure out what the problem is and then try and fix it. And you fix those things at slower speeds most often. There are times when something might need to be fixed at a faster speed, that certainly happens. But most of the time, you're trying to slow things down. Notice how my head moves when I get to that first string. Because in my mind, I'm thinking about bump, 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 bump. I'm, I don't really have to focus on deca da deca da deca da deca. I'm just thinking about my downbeats each time. Right? That's how this whole thing works. Now, again, every day, and I haven't practiced that much this morning, I was working on an audio thing this morning, but the goal is, is I sit and I work with these things over and over and over to synchronize my hands and my brain as I play. As I try and develop these various things, 
Okay, awesome. so that's the first thing to understand is when it comes to alternate picking, alternate picking is part of the battle, but the other battle is this hand has to be doing something. If you give it synchronization and not just, I should say symmetry, which is if I give it three notes on each string, this hand can learn to do the same thing over and over and over very comfortably, okay? Now, before I move on, because that's gonna tie into my next conversation, but before I wanna mo move on here, I'm gonna see if Dan has anything. Well, I just wanna mention a couple of things, uh, resources that we have for you guys. Um, there's, there's, people still keep um, coming in, new folks are coming in at uh, where we're doing this live broadcast, which is awesome. Just want to let you guys know that all of these are going to be available on the YouTube channel for you. Um, Steve, can I share my screen for a second? Because I'm going to show people how to actually navigate to that. Mm -hmm. um, how do I do this? Share screen. Guys, let me know if you can see my YouTube screen. I'm on the YouTube channel. Can you see it, Steve? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. So, guys, all of these sessions that we did for you are going to be available on YouTube. Just go to Guitar Zoom. I'm sorry. Just go to uh, YouTube. Type in Guitar Zoom, and this will pop up. Click on this big old uh, uh, button right here, this big logo, and then just go straight over to Playlists. And when you click on Playlists, everything will be available for you right here under the Essential Techniques Live Guitar Workshop. Okay? So that's where all of the uh, the workshops are. And if we click on that, let's see how many... Let's see, I can run you through. There's the web replay on it. See all these down here, guys? Uh, the first one we did, well, no, they're in this order. Cool. Uh, we did Feel the Rhythm. You see that one is an hour and 20. Uh, Central Techniques, live session number two. This is Picking Perfection. It's an hour and 13 minutes. This one on uh, Playing Songs. We did one on Creative Soloing. We did one, uh, this was a live Q&A, which was really fun. And then uh, the one we just did the other day was the three critical soloing techniques. So all of these playlists are here for you. You can go and just check them out um deep dive into whichever ones that you're most interested in we have that available for you let me click stop share so all the workshops are going to be available for you there and of course um right now we extended the the introductory price on steve's new course it's essential techniques by steve stein available at guitarzoom.com right now it's been extended for a few more days that so you can still get in because uh, we decided to do some more live workshops for you so if you're interested in the course go check it out also, we're going to do a live, or we're going to do a Q&A here in just a minute. So make sure you get your questions in. And make sure that you tell us, uh, if you're interested in this, tell us why you play guitar. What does it mean to you and how has it changed your life? Next time on the Steve Stein Guitar Podcast. So again, we're running through this stuff pretty quick. Obviously, there's all kinds of other elements of learning these sorts of things, but I just want to explain to you the picking styles. So we've done alternate picking. So the next thing we move on to is what's called economy picking. Now, economy picking is when you utilize um, a small element of sweet picking while you're alternate picking. So let's say, for instance, I took the A major diatonic scale here, and I played this. And as I play it that way, you'll notice I'm alternate picking the whole thing. Okay? Another way that you can approach doing that, though, because I have more strings below me, where when I did this... I ran out of strings, right? Because I was making a pattern that goes up and comes back down. Okay, and I could do that anywhere, obviously. Well, now I'm gonna travel toward the floor using all six strings. So one thing that I have an option of being able to do is play like this. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And you push that pick through each time, so you wind up with two downs. You see? So you can actually learn. I hear it all the time. I've heard it for 30 years of my life. So I can push that pick through. Okay. Hey, Steve Stein here from GuitarZoom.com, and thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, can I ask you a favor? Please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with a friend. Your feedback means more to me than you'll ever know. And be sure to check out my YouTube channels where you'll find over 1,000 videos to help you with your guitar playing. Thanks again for listening. Stay positive, keep playing, and keep having fun.
If you'd like some help with your guitar playing but you're not sure how to get started, go to guitarzoom.com and look for the Help Me Choose survey. By answering a few simple questions, you'll get Steve's personal recommendation of the perfect course for you. All this and more is available for you at guitarzoom.com.